Don't forget me, Srebrenica. You'll always be in my heart, Srebrenica. A'uz billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, elders, a respected audience, uh, welcome to another episode of Real Talk. All right, inshallah. So, um, so what's going on? Nothing, nothing. Alhamdulillah. How you been? Alhamdulillah, I've been all right. Yeah. So has, I, has COVID keeping you? Can't complain. In yeah. good, 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 uh, good health. Mm. Good health. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Have you have you given your uh, zobo yet? Your 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 zobo kurbani, like in terms of uh, where you're gonna give it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah, I've gone to the, the the homeland, isn't it? Alhamdulillah. <laughs> yeah, same here, same here. I've got uh, quite a few people to feed, so inshallah, it's sent over there. Well, I, I, I've been told that it's best to do it locally as part of the sunnah. Yeah. It is. Correct me if I'm wrong. So I think man, man might need to get one done in the UK. Yeah, I'm with that. Anyway, <laughs> let's get to some serious talk, inshallah. So uh, today, so today we got some. Uh, alhamdulillah, we got uh, two uh, topics that we want to talk about. Um, these topics uh, are not any. Uh, all of you, brothers and sisters, will be very familiar. You must have. Heard uh, in different news forums, etc., different views, and we're just going to try to give you a bit of real talk in terms of what our thoughts are on it. And inshallah, um, you Roman sisters take away something from it. So, uh, the two topics that we have today is uh, Srebrenica uh, and uh, the terrible uh, massacre that took place of our brothers and sisters over there. Um, and uh, the other topic we've got is uh, Hagia Sophia, uh, the masjid uh, reopening, alhamdulillah. I've been looking into, uh, thinking about this a lot in terms of the Srebrenica massacre recently. And, you know, and it was interesting to see, you know, views uh, and even to the extent there are some, apparently there's some uh, deniers of the actual genocide that took place over there. And I thought, subhanAllah, you know, 25 years on, and this is one of the reasons why we're talking about this topic, because it was the 25th uh, anniversary of that uh, uh, massacre, that genocide, 25 years. It was the uh, 25th year. Yeah, and uh, for those of you who, who, who are unaware of what happened, um, there was a, a, a war a Bos- um, in Bosnia between 92 and 95, 1995 uh, to 92. And during that time, um, a lot of people got killed. A majority were Muslims, uh, Bosnian Muslims. And during that war in 1995, um, 8,000 Muslim men and boys were killed um, uh, by Serb soldiers. And this was uh, supposedly under the safe haven, under the protection of the UN which was manned by Dutch soldiers. By the way, they, they, they walked away um, free, all of them. Even there was a, a call around that, and that's uh, astonishing to see that after 8,000 people got killed, nobody was held accountable for that. What happened was there was uh, roughly about ten to 15,000, don't quote me on that, Muslims, including women and children, they uh, were heading towards uh, uh, basically Srebrenica and they arrived at a safe haven <clears throat> and literally uh, the, the UN soldiers um, gave in to the, the Serb soldiers who separated the men and women and then took the, the, the Muslim men uh, uh, and boys to uh, a place and massacred them. 8,000 of our uh, brothers and our um, sons, a lot more like, got butchered. 
And if you, there, I mean, there's so many different stories uh, you'd hear how, how they killed, you could imagine 8,000 people, 8,000 people in a room. If you think about um, those of you who pray in East London Masjid, you know, we top it around what? What would you say, Rashid? Five? More than that. More than that? Maybe yeah, more than that. So what would you say the top max on that would be? Six, seven, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So imagine all of that in one. Was well, so even during like, uh, during Ramadan alone, squeezed up people, stairways. I'm sure I guess easily probably seven to eight. I would. Yeah, so I, I, I just want to give people an idea of what 8,000, the number looks like. So it's like one full house in East London Mosque. And so imagine all of those people you know, that amount of people getting butchered. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, it was a horrific um, uh, time. And especially after, you know, in Europe where they, you know, they experienced the Holocaust. And back then, you know, the, the people said never again. And, and, and it happened. It happened. And, the you know, Rashid will, can give you some of the, the kind of makeup of that time of 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 the country and the breakup, but there was what was interesting is that what the the Serb uh, the Muslims uh, that went through, and before leading up to the war and the demonizing of the of the Muslims, you know we're not far or actually we most probably experiencing the same thing in Europe right at this moment, in terms of how the media the laws and the different states uh, treat the Muslims and how they demonize them in uh, in every every essence. And yeah, and, and, and I'll, inshallah we'll go into that a, a little bit more. Um, do you want to give us a little bit of an idea, Brother Rashid, in terms of like the breakup of that time of that country? I mean, you, we were talking about it and I think, you know, it did my, you know. Because it's like with anything, when you're looking at history, you're trying to make sense of it. And there's a lot of jumping around you when it's doing. But generally speaking, uh, um, like from what I understand, and I'm, I'm always open to being corrected, that Bosnia was once part of the Ottoman Khilaf. Line. So it was part of the, the Muslim Empire. And post uh, around 1908, you got annexed and got part, became part of like Austria, Hungary. So we're talking about a different type of region back then. Anyway, fast forward, it became Yugoslavia, which then, I think post World War One, there was like an assassination uh, that took place on France Ferdinand, yeah, uh, in uh, like Sarajevo, I think it was. He was there with his wife. He got capped here, he got taken out. Um, and after which then that kind of like, I think that was one of the catalysts to leading up to World War One. Um, Yugoslavia later on, I think, split up into republics, yeah, six republic state, of which one was Bosnia Herzegovina, uh, right? But what's important to understand is Bosnia, as like I thought once, was just a place where Muslims lived. I actually thought Bosnia was a place where just Muslims lived, like it was a Muslim state. That's the way I understood, yeah. But I was, uh, I was, I was mistaken because there's three ethnic groups there. You've got the Serbs, yeah? You've got the Bosniaks, the Bosniaks are the Muslims, and you've got the Croats. The Serbs are the Orthodox Christians, and the Croats are the Roman Catholic Christians. And if you look at it in present times, that you've got the Roman Catholic Christians and the Muslim uh, Bosniaks, they kind of work together in order to win the politics to keep Serb Orthodox Christians out because they're like ultra nationalists, they want to take complete power. But the way things are at the moment, I think there's like a rotation of how the country is governed. So I think like eight, every eight months, different prime ministers or prisoners, whatever you call it, a leader will take will take a turn leading the country. It's crazy, yeah. And it's just the way things are from what I understand. But what I found really interesting was the Muslims are really, really a minority, yeah? So Yugoslavia was, as it was once, split. Now, it be then it became republics, and then it became official separate states. 
countries, if you like. Yeah? So you've got to one side of uh, Bosnia, you've got Croatia, to the other side, you've got Serbia and you've got other, other nations surrounding it. But the point being is that these aren't Muslim countries or Muslim population surrounding that area. So essentially, Muslims are alone. So when, when we, if we fast forward now to like the whole genocide, Muslims were actually truly alone. You know what I mean? So like some of the things that you were talking about, like safe areas, that's like one of the most horrific parts of European history, where Muslims were slaughtered. Yeah, it's not something that you can even present in a water that I won't know how someone would water this down because it's terrific. Because but they used exactly the same ta tactics. So I, I, what I couldn't understand was that during that time, you know, during the the Holocaust and leading up to the Holocaust, and you know what Hitler did in terms of demonizing the Jews in every way whatsoever, and then when it came to you know killing so many uh, Jews. You know, he didn't have to uh, convince anybody because he's done the brainwashing already. And that happened in, in Bosnia as well, you know, because if, if you look at when you, you were talking about the, the kind of makeup, you know, they were all living side by side, similar to how we're living here. You know, Christian country, you know, there's what, two, how many million Muslims in this country? What, two, 2.5 or 2 million and um, so they're all living side by side, similar makeup, you know, and and and, you know, in the beginning when I said, you know, that there's similarities even up until this day as to what's happening with the, the Muslims and the demonization. So if you look at all the different laws that are against Muslims in all different, you know, you know, in, in, in terms of the European countries. So in this country, we've got prevent. Schedule 7, they all target in Muslims, you know, if you look at how many people are referred to those programs, it's majority of Muslims. And even if you're going to prevent, and I don't know if you've been like uh, in NHS, uh, you know, as part of their Manju training, you have to go through, I think most uh, uh, kind of statutory jobs now. You have to is, 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 is being, um, no, it's, being it's, it's being challenged into every sphere of public, public, uh, public life, the you understand, from, from school, to the NHS, uh, to most uh, most places of work. Do you understand? So and Muslims are... What they are educating, or they want to call it educating, in their prevent program, it's demonizing Muslims full stop in a negative mm -hmm. light. So what they're doing is if all the, like, you know, certain little things, oh, you've seen a change in the behavior. If someone starts to go in prayers five times a day, you know, they have a, a different opinion around politics. All of those things where, um, so this is just, one, sorry, so I was just going to finish off. This is just one aspect of like in the public sphere where they are uh, demonizing Muslims. And then you got the media rampant, you know, every, uh, you never see any positive light of a Muslim doing, even during COVID. Did you see any positive news around uh, uh, the activities that Muslims were doing? I know that we were going round, Muslims were going round, giving food to the elderly, you know, they were providing masks for hospitals, they're doing all of that. But you, you none of that was covered by the media. No, and, and, even, and, and what you say is absolutely, absolutely right, because when you're talking about like Islamophobia, uh, institutionalised, yeah, and you're talking about the news, even when you're looking at, for example, um, Muslims and COVID, you will see that when they're talking about COVID and it being uh, and it being an issue, you will notice the subtlety in the racism that was coming out into the pictures. Do you understand? So you might see an article and you might see a sister in the hijab, yeah. yeah. Or you might see an uncle in the, so the subtlety and the racism and the, the, and the and the structural Islamophobia is apparent. Even you the see? even the pictures they took. BBC took a picture of the beach. I don't know if you saw that, yeah. And you know that beach was. Um, 90 percent mostly 99 percent it was white yeah but they took a picture and it had like a blurred uh, of a asian muslim family you know oh i haven't seen that one yeah it was it was hilarious yeah Out of the whole like there must have one family must have ended up there and they got that picture but it's just those subtle things but it's just coming back to it that we haven't 
you know that we, we we talk about these genocides and we talk about you know those all of those brothers and sisters dying and what what is it that the the you know the western countries learn from that for it to ha not to happen again you know that guy andy andy what's his name um you know the the guy who uh anders brevik who, who who killed the white supremacist norwegian you know, he had the 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 kind of uh, Serbi Serbian uh, nationalist song glorifying him. You know, um, so they take they take uh, uh, what was that word? Sorry, uh, they take inspiration from the Serbian massacre. All of those white nationalists. What you're talking about is white privilege, isn't it? Essentially, because you're talking about when a certain ethnic group can take certain actions, even even when it's unlawful. It will be torn down. Yeah. Again, you're you're talking about a racist structure. Yeah. Right. That's what you're talking about. You look at look at, for example, um, Muslims uh, who went and fought against uh, ISIS, for example. Yeah. They get banged up. They lose citizenship. All sorts of stuff. Even if they're not going out to fight, they're going out to do aid work. Yeah. They get they lose their citizenship. Right. But then you've got um, white people who go out and join uh, KK who are a terrorist organization to attack Turkey, for example, yeah? Um, and as far as I understand that, uh, Turkey is part of the European Union, yeah, one of the main countries, right? Part of it. It's all right to go and join PKK and fight them, uh, fight alongside them, do you, do you see? So this is this is this type of thing where you're going to get selective outrage, selective storytelling narratives yeah that's going to shape a certain image about a particular type of community we should expect it we should expect nothing less in all honesty yeah and, and they haven't you know like even like you know the denial of what i was saying is so uh flagrant that the the bosnian serb of his plan to build a statue a, a guy called peter handek or something and he's um uh, a basically i think he's a noble pete or something winner um and and he he he, he won the Nobel Prize for something. I'm not sure exactly what it was for. But this guy, he he blatantly denies the, 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 oh, the separation Peter, genocide. Uh, Peter Hank. Yeah. 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 So it's the, some of this stuff is mainstream. Now, imagine like, you know, uh, if, if you was to kind of deny the Holocaust and stuff, you know, you would, you, you, would, be behind, you would be behind. Sorry? It's a crime. The Holocaust, as far as I understand, it's a crime. Yeah. You'll get and so again, there's, there's, you would see there's a double standard. So I, for me, then you know, we, we, after 25 years, 25 years, we haven't uh, moved on as, as Muslims. You know, we, I think we need to do a lot more um, in terms of going in the, the main public sphere and highlighting these issues and the inequalities and uh, the injustice that happening to our brothers and sisters because in, in, it's, it, this is the only way that we could highlight you know uh, this stuff and yeah, but there's something that we need to take responsibility for that i feel very strongly about and one of them is that we need to um educate um the younger generation about these types of events yeah and certain types of uh, education curriculum won't cover this do you understand? Now, the, the genocide in in Bosnia is happening on European soil. Yeah. It's a recent European history, right? And I think that is something that should be taught to, to, to children because this is recent history. This is a massive event um, around intolerance, yeah? Right? And ignorance. Where you're talking about, like you like, nicely put, yeah, this is, uh, Bosnia is a, is, is a diverse place in terms of uh, where where Muslims and non-Muslims live. What's interesting, though, and this is this is something that uh, someone was saying, where there's a difference between a, a right wing, yeah, and uh, a racist, right? Because a racist hates someone because of this ethnicity, isn't it? <laughs> right? Whereas yeah. a right wing, a right wing will hate you because of your belief. Do you understand? Yeah. So. If you look at Bosnia, it wasn't that oh, it's like racism in that sense. It's like, mate, we don't want these Muslims surviving, mate. We don't want them. We either want to isolate them or at best exterminate them, which they did. You know what I mean? And 
Like, if you look into the details of that, that the, the events that took place in there, you're talking about mass killings. You're talking about uh, mass, you're talking about rape camps. You know what I mean? There's like so many things to touch on, man. That's that's heartbreaking stuff. You know what I mean? And this is just like this stuff. Some of the stuff that I've mentioned already, I've just mentioned it. We haven't gone into details. There's other things that we could be talking about, but I don't think it's appropriate because we don't know what audience can stomach. Do you understand? At the same time, to regurgitate this type of stuff isn't nice. You know what I mean? Because some of this stuff is is, is gore. You know what I mean? And uh, it's horrific. It's horrific. And as uh, sometimes you look at that, you look at all of those kind of massacres, torture, all of those things happen. And I, I, I it, it, it really depresses me. Uh, not it depresses me because I, I, I think to myself, how can one human being do that to another human being? You know. Um, in terms of the way people got killed, you know, young boys got killed, young girls got raped. It's horrific, horrific. And how a human being could get around doing those kind of acts. And and then I think as Muslims, we really, really need to just wake up and look around us and look around Europe. Uh, and, and recently I was seeing... If you look at some of those countries, you know, you, you, it's interesting you describe the right wing. A lot of those right wing nationalist parties, they're gaining traction, you know, in many, many European countries. And if you see the rhetoric of those governments and those nationalist parties, what, where, what, what kind of slogans and headlines do they use to gain those votes? It's all anti-Muslim rhetoric, all of it. You know, and and this this all for all of us, you know, we really need to get off our seats and start, you know, going out there, giving dawah and educating people in whatever way we can. We need to show the, the people out there the real Islam and not let the media, the Joe Block, you know, take over and give that narrative. But the question is that uh, this is where when we're talking about what is the real Islam, is that what we're talking about? It's like Muslims are in a state of uh, inferiority. You know what I mean? They're quick to apologize. They just want to please everyone around them. Yeah. The deen ain't, the deen ain't about that. The deen is about facts. Yeah. And figures, mate. Yeah. When we talk about facts, we're talking about what Allah and His Mission yeah, has oh. brought us. You know what I mean? And say how he is. Don't think about what next man's. We should be concerned. I always say we should be concerned what people think. We're Muslims. We stand by that, yeah, and we will speak the truth here yeah, on matters that we what we're able to speak about. You yeah, understand so what we don't know about, what we don't understand, we leave it up to us and, and the people of knowledge to to demonstrate the truth on that. If they do that job, inshallah, you know what I mean. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, brothers and sisters, we we encourage you to inshallah. You know, read about um, uh, the what happened in Bosnia. I think uh, there's so many. We, you know, we can't cover it in one show, but I think this is just a little snippet um, for all of you guys, inshallah, and, and sisters. Um, yeah, um, uh, it's I can't speak enough of of our brown sisters, and I I make a dua that Allah grants them jannah. And next step, accept them as a shaheed, inshallah. I'm going to show you something. There's a, there, this is going to be your your cue. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, can you see that? So you you jack you jack one of the bays when we're walking in the hood. Yeah. <laughs> so the Kaye tribe ring, yeah. Yeah, the Kayi tribe ring, bros. I took yeah, my allegiance. Junet Bay, yeah? Junet Bay. I give my bayah. Alhamdulillah. So hit us so with it. Hit us swiftly. with it. We're rolling swiftly onto the new masjid in the hood. Big up to my brothers and sisters in Turkey. Allah Making Allah. salam in the beautiful place. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Yeah. I mean, did you see that clip, bro? Did you see that clip of the Fajr Salah? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy, man. Subhanallah. You know, that was mad. I, when I looked at it and I thought, like, everybody came out. It was like a moment. You know, you could imagine. I, I really, if I had the opportunity, I would have gone, bro. I would have gone, you know. I went, I checked it out. And when I went, obviously, it was a museum at the time. Yeah. And uh, and I saw some of the, 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 the works in there. Because you can see that when... Um, Ataturk, yeah, uh, co- uh, converted the the masjid into a museum at the time. You know, what I mean, uh, I think that they were trying to recover some of the Christians' uh, artwork. Okay. I mean, so if you go in there and you look at the dome, you could see some of the some of the plasters being removed. You see, and you've got images of like, like human faces with like wings in it. So it's the way that Christians portray angels and stuff like that is from their own mind, in it, as opposed to the, we don't know when it, it's the Raib, in it. we don't know, we haven't seen the angels. But that's from the, the, their mindset, I suppose. Freaky stuff, though. You know, it's, I mean, from, you know? it's, from, it's from their hadith, bro. It's from their hadith. Yeah, I don't know what hadith they're getting that much details from, bro. But anyway. But yeah, man, it's a, it's a. Matthew, Matthew had some visions, bro. No, but either way, bro, that that the news, beautiful news. The question I'm gonna ask you is, were well, man them wrong to do it? Were well, man them wrong? Why why would they be wrong? I'm asking you, bro, because I've been hearing bare Muslims crying about it. No, I <laughs> I heard. Some people even condemning it. I I, I got baffled, bruvs. I'm thinking. That's what I'm saying. What, what's there to condemn about? It was a masjid, isn't it? No, it was a museum, bruv. Correction, bruv. Details matter. It was a it was a museum, a museum converted to a masjid. No, it was a place of worship. Okay, it was a place of worship, and it got converted to a masjid. And it was a, a masjid for over what six hundred years? Well, how many years was it? Sorry, I'm I'm getting all. Five hundred years. So initially, um, Orthodox Christians they built uh, Hagia Sophia uh, out of wood, um, and then there was like a revolt that took place. They burnt it down. Um, they rebuilt it again. I think it was Ju- 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 Julian the first or something like that. I yeah. Have to go back. I don't actually find it yet, but either way. Um, he rebuilt it this time with uh, concrete or rocks or stones, wherever it was. He wasn't made of wood. Um, again, there was another revolt. Uh, man then burnt it down again. You know what I mean? So twice it got burned down, yeah, by Christians themselves, right? So it got rebuilt again. Then uh, Rasulullah Sallam. Uh, we're going, well, now we're going back. You know what I mean? So. Uh, there was an event that was taking place, uh, and uh, I can't remember what it was. It was the, let me find it, give me a second. It was when it was, yes, during the, con- the Confederates, yeah, remember that incident, yeah? Um, when there was a time when all the enemies uh, of uh, Rasulullah Sallam had merged together to fight the Muslims at the time, and there was an army of 11,000. And the Muslims were maybe about 3,000, there was a small number. And it was the situation. Um, and by the way, that army of 3,000 amongst the Muslims, 1,000 of them were Munafikin, yeah? So, rule talk, there's 2,000 of the Muslims, yeah? So, Munafikin, yeah? All right? Um, so, 2,000 Muslims up against um, 11,000, didn't it? So, anyway, long story cut short, um, I think the Sahabas, they, they, were, they, were, they were breaking rocks or something like that and and they asked Rasulullah Sallam to come and break one of the massive rocks in it and with his blessed hand uh, you know what I mean he he struck the rock and he and he broke it four times he struck it from what I understand and each time there was a spark and amongst the sparks he had he saw visions in it and one of the visions was the was the uh, that's where we go back to the hadith uh, if, I, if I'm correct uh, where he foresaw the, the a great army a great leader you know what I mean, and uh, the 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 conquer the conquering of uh, Constantinople. So big up to Muhammad Al Fatih for some some uh, some blessed work. Alhamdulillah, because when the Muslims came, yeah, you know what I mean. 
they didn't in take, well there's, there's there's discussion around whether he purchased it or not Allahu alam but the, but he didn't destroy it yeah he didn't destroy the building yeah he respected it and he he maintained the the, the f- features and there was additions made to it later on you know i mean when the minarets and all that went up as you can see in, in present times so yeah where, mate where was all that where was all the condemnation when uh, Atatuko, where why he is when he turned it into a museum, you know. Bro, condemnation. What condemnation? Man put Quran into a museum, bro. The the Quran became a place, uh, uh, an object of of just to to uh, to be watching. So you know, you could you couldn't even read it. He he stopped he stopped azan. You know, he banned the Arabic language. Do you understand? So and even is. I mean, I, I don't get it sometimes, you know, a place where, you know, they, they opened it up on a mosque. Can you imagine, like, how many Muslims are going to go and pray in there? Like, just from a Muslim standpoint point of view, yeah. yeah, that, you know, the, the ones that are condemning it, etc. Like, the, the barakah is going to bring around that area and the people that are going to be praying there. It's just, uh, not, I, I would prefer that any day than just to walk around like donuts and looking at stuff, you know, that you could go to any museum and look at. You know, and then look, you won't, even though, if you look at the current context that the museum um, has now revived into a breathing place of worship, right? This building was initially designed, built to worship, for human beings to worship Allah, is it? Right? Now, I think it's, it's dinner time for you, you know? If Everyone's you, getting hungry, mate. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, going back to it, so you're talking about a place of worship now be, be, being a place for worship, yeah? And uh, Erdogan, uh, made it clear that um, Muslims and Kufar can visit the place. You know what I mean? They haven't been banned from it. Exactly. Understand? So he hasn't done anything wrong. There's nothing, and, and, and it's the Turks that made that decision, and not outsiders. Right? And from what I understand, it was a petition that was put forward in order to make that conversion. So what's the big deal? The people made that decision. Exactly. You understand? <laughs> Do you think? So I don't understand what all the all the all the all the all the crybabies are all about. So so you've got all of these types of things going on when the people have made the decision in their place, in their country, in their land, where ninety nine percent of the population is Muslim. You know what I mean? It's that divorce divorce mentality, bro. You know, people just wanna sit in their homes and don't wanna bring any kind of attention to them and they feel like, you know, when you do this kind of stuff, you just bring no unnecessary attention. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you know, they, they, they're not going to stop until you convert to their religion, bro. So regardless, oh, you stay, stay you in the whole... You can't tell me that, though, You can't tell me that. Tell them, bro. Yes. You know what I mean? I, there's some crazy thing that I think I was reading the other day. Like, Muslims are human beings. We make mistakes. Do you understand? But this is a reminder to me. First of all, Muslims is a serious thing, yeah? Like, Muslims have made mistakes where they've gone abroad to do some something God knows what. Like for example, this lady, she married, married some brother, they went and joined um, uh, ISIS, yeah, and then things went pear for them. Don't, I don't know what happened to the brother. She come back. She left Dean, bro, yeah, she left Dean. You made a mistake, you made a mistake. Put your hands up, say you made a mistake, yeah. Go back, live your life, educate yourself, yeah, and continue in that role, didn't it? No, bro, she left Dean. Allah bro. And now she's talking about, like, she's going to go on, by the sounds of things, she's looking to jump on the same bandwagon and stop her own quillium, from what I understand here, because she wants to stop radicalising people, yeah? Right? <laughs> you know what I mean? But this is what I'm saying. I'm saying that people don't, Muslims don't educate themselves, then they don't learn. Then they're, they're going to make mistakes. And this is a reminder to me, because we have to make sure that we know who Allah is. We know who's Mr. Shalas and Amis. And we need to make sure that we are sincere in, in our worship, in our belief, in, and then we don't fall into some sort of test here where we, where, where, where we, um, uh, where we kind of like 
I mean, fall in those, into those types of situations. When when are you buying me a ticket, bro? Do you go there? Where? What do you think I'm talking about? I want to no, go. I, I want to go. No, I want to go and pray there, bro. Yeah. You you got to buy me a ticket, bro. Nah, man. This is it's, it's your topic, so you have to you have to no, 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 no. pay the ticket to go and pray no, there. No, no. Like, we have to bring it home. I have to bring it home and confirm that, yeah, subhanAllah, you know, brother Rashid inspired me. And then he slapped a ticket on my hand. And it's... <laughs> Let me just give me one second, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll do something amazing for you. Just one second, yeah. Do I have permission to move away from the phone for a second? Um, all right, go on. Let's see. Let's see this, whatever you're going to bring in. I hope you surprise our, our viewers, you know. I bet yeah he's gone. Like you know that it was dinner time. I think he's just going. Otherwise, it would have been war. No. Do you do you want to go to Hagia Sophia? Yeah, yeah. So inshallah, inshallah. Let's come down. Look, I've got it here, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the one. It's the one. Listen, I'm gonna send my Lego man's over there. Yeah. Bro, man, you know what happened, bro? When I went here, I come back with the blue mosque here, yeah? right? Model just like that one. This is a lesson for everyone who goes to Bougie yeah, and buys souvenirs, yeah? So we went in the shop, yeah? And I said, I want to buy this, yeah? The man gave it, yeah? Give him that, Sophia, yeah? And he's telling me he's giving me the blue mosque, innit? Man, give me a box, bro. Come back. Unwrap it, bro. This was the most deformed blue mosque I saw in my life, yeah? <laughs> I was so upset, man, because you're traveling. You're paying expensive tickets, yeah? To go on a holiday, only to come back with some deformed mosque, bro. Bruv, he done a he done a he done a thingy, um a brickwork on you. You know the market brickwork. Here you go, here's a laptop, and the next thing you know, you got a bottle of <laughs> a bottle of yeah, coke. Yeah, I helped help, help that brother, bro. But that was bruv. I was upset, bro. That blue mosque, bro, looked banging, bro. Have you ever been to Turkey? No, no, I've been there, Alhamdulillah. And I think you know it's it's amazing. Everybody should visit there, inshallah. Now we've got more of a reason to go there and and give our you know big up to Erdogan and crew for making this a, a reality for a lot of us inshallah Turkey is probably I've travelled a lot yeah around the world alhamdulillah yeah Allah gave me Tawfiq to do that seen some sad things in life you know what I mean poverty you know what I mean and uh, if anything he should humble us you know what I mean and uh, teach us to value new things you know what I mean not become selfish and self-centred in that way but one of the things about Turkey is that, wallahi man, every Muslim yeah, with their family should be going there for holidays. You should be supporting that country. Yeah, so regardless of what the media says, forget the media. Yeah, we and, they, are enough and they got all of those, um, you know, those um, halal hotels, bro. I mean, I stayed in one of them, subhanAllah, it was an amazing experience, bro. You know, uh, the missus was able to go in, you know, a uh, private swimming pool, nobody there. The food was banging, uh, like, it was just, like, amazing experience. And not to think about anything, masjid inside the inside the hotel, the kids running around, you know. It, yeah, so, like you said, I think everybody needs to go in and uh, plough the money over in Turkey. Um, yeah, man, go, go, check it out. You're gonna learn a lot. You're gonna see that. It it's a hot country sometimes. Sometimes it does rain. You know what I mean? But the visuals is amazing. Visuals are amazing, and you know there's so much there. The food is lovely. I love Turkish food anyway. Turkish food is banging. Yeah, quality. You can't go wrong in that. So you know what I mean? before we um, start wrapping up, brother Rashid, what what's your message to those? Um, um, what do I call those individuals who the 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 condemners the <laughs> the the defeatist condemners that uh, yeah, they can keep they can keep apologizing me right the fact of the matter is yeah there's Muhammad Fateh conquered and run things bro ninety nine percent of that country is Muslim alhamdulillah yeah, and Islam is there to grant justice. Alhamdulillah. Yeah? Muslims and non-Muslims. Islam is fair. Yeah, 
and those who are who are obedient to Allah will see the the, the will see the haq, inshallah. So I, like, if you want if you want to apologize, man, keep apologizing in it. You know, you could uh, apologize after his Eid is what week two weeks away. You could apologize because it's Eid as well. You might as well just say, I'm sorry, it's Eid. I'm sorry. Yeah, they're already apologizing for all those uh, uh, kurbani we're gonna make. You know, some of them yeah, turn to oh, vegan. They're getting I'm sorry. vegan and stuff, man. I had to, I had to sacrifice a cow. I'm sorry. I'm, next time I try and do a sheep. It's less I cracked me up the other day. One of them, he, he, they created a, a sheep with a cauliflower. <laughs> and they put it. I've seen that one, bro. If people want to live in a bubble and for everything that Islam permits and they want to they wanna apologize for that, yeah. let, them, let them apologize. I've got no issues with that, mate. They're dealing with Allah, ain't it? Rule two, for everything you say and do, your dealings with Allah is recorded with what angels on either side. Man, they, they, they are going to be, they're making, they're writing everything down. Nothing is going to be hiding in the day of judgment. Nothing. It's all coming. Nothing. We all, we're we're all going to return. Uh, like Rasulullah said, death is guaranteed, you know. Death is guaranteed. You'll meet your Lord. And, and every single atom of deed action is going to be accounted for bro how how, how, how has anyone apologized for the grand masjid in spain that how many masjids have been converted into churches forget about that look what happened in india the babar masjid yeah, exactly out? exactly so it's this it's rules, rules of the game it's rules of the game in it i suppose that you you take over you command you conquer type of thing in it it's the way it is you know, understand? And, and well, I'm gonna, we're gonna end there, bro, Rashid, because um, it's coming up to time. Um, I was gonna ask um, Voice because he slept last time and he didn't put the the track on, so I'm hoping he's gonna get it. You know, get it this time. So we, you know, we were saying we we're gonna introduce like a, a a kind of a happy thought. So we wanted to big up a, a special brother. Um, I think our heart went out when we heard the news of brother Tox Sharif and you know the ordeal he went through and Alhamdulillah the good news uh, that we received that he he got uh, released and and we just wanted to uh, before we um, yeah to end the show with Can this. Let us add something to on. that, bro. You know what I mean, I think sometimes yeah, I think it's great, brother Tox, bad man. Yeah, I think brother, keep keep at keep at it, bro. You're doing the ummah a huge service, not just ummah, mankind, bro. Yeah, people are gonna see the work of a Muslim. You understand? Yeah, so keep at it. But behind every great man is what a great woman, in Rasulullah Sallam. Yeah, had Khadija Radhiyallahu Anha behind him. You know what I mean? Right. Saying that, my sister Raquel, bro, is in. Uh, is doing big jobs as well, bro. Yes, she's yeah. got it to everybody's attention. Alhamdulillah, yeah. She and his it. team, and his team, and then we've got our brother Bilal, bro, OGN crew. You he's, know what I mean? He's crazy, man. Malah, Alhamdulillah, he's he's doing a banging job out there as well. But Alhamdulillah, so uh, voice, we would like you to add, um, finish off with that clip, inshallah. Um, I think it's a beautiful clip for all of us to see. And uh, so to our brothers and sisters, um, I take leave. Assalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> and you, you, you're like 10 minute delayed, man. <laughs> كل الغلا والحب بقدومهم مصروف فينا وحيينا أصحابنا بحروف أهلا هلا فيكم ويقول أهل ملهو فينا وحيينا أصحابنا